Everybody who still walks around that believes that what he's doing today is still gonna be relevant and that he's still gonna do it the way he does it right now, it's time to wake up. First of all, I believe it's important that you understand that it builds upon capabilities that we have created over the last few decades. By that I mean primarily we have created a large amount of computing power, tons of data and connectivity. And those three elements, they trigger all kinds of in innovations such as machine learning, AI, IoT, who again then start to influence emerging technologies like biotech, infotech and so on. Which brings me to the second element I think is important in understanding the fourth industrial revolution is that it is going to be a blend of infotech, biotech, infotech, nanotech, infotech, robotics. So, and at the end of the day, it's going to be, but that is long term, very difficult to make the distinction between the physical, the digital and the biological world. Now, a final element is uh, something that we need to have in our mind, in our mindset, namely exponential thinking. And that's going to be one hell of a stretch because we are used in thinking in linear terms and exponential is a new kid on the block. And for sure, if you look at all these technologies, they have a lot of potential to create a better world for all. Huh? Biotechnology, curing all kinds of diseases, creating sustainable food for 10 billion people, nanotechnology, building the materials and the fuels of the future, all of that is feasible and that's not so far away. However, it's us and the decisions we make in what we do with the technology that's going to define the outcome. Well, I sincerely doubt that there are many companies out there who are already very well prepared for the full-blown impact of the fourth industrial revolution. Now, many of them are still struggling with understanding digital, which is a very small subset of the fourth industrial revolution. Now the question is, can they? When I read the newspapers this morning and when I read what the central theme of the World Economic Forum of this year is, let's create a global architecture for the fourth industrial revolution, that made a lot of sense to me. It's about creating that framework, those ethical rules about the governance, how are we going to govern this world that we desperately need in order to go and to fully grasp the potential of the fourth industrial revolution. There has always been that kind of an evolution, but there have been more jobs, more prosperity for all at the end of the day. It's that intermediate phase you have to go through where you have the disruption. And this disruption is characterized by very fast exponential progress. So the question is, how do you absorb the change from going to old jobs into new? And that is the biggest challenge we face today. Now, of course, in this intermediate phase, there's a lot of questions, a lot of fear, uh, unwillingness to accept change. hard skills that you're going to need five to ten years into the future, that's going to be very difficult to predict. So you have to be open-minded. Now what I consider to be much more important and valuable are the soft skills you need in this uncharted world. And recently I read a small book called From Grid to Great and grit was defined uh, in four building blocks which I think are very relevant. First was initiative, take initiative, don't sit there idle afraid of the change that is happening. Now embrace it and do something with it. Second is passion. And passion for me also means curiosity. Be curious about this world of untapped potential and uh, go out and search for it. The third element is uh, tenacity. Tenacity is be very goal focused. Never let go of the goals you're aiming for. And then finally, the fourth element is perseverance. Perseverance is about not give up. Huh? If you are faced with a, with a setback, if you have failure, don't let go. Then you have the perfect menu of mental skills that are going to make you successful into the future. Well, with regard to talent and talent development, well, Position yourself regularly in front of the mirror and ask yourself, where am I today? Where did I come from? How did I evolve? And am I still in sync with what I see happening around me? And am I still comfortable in how I can turn that into an advantage? You are the master of your destiny, nobody else. And of course, government and organizations and businesses and whatever can help you to get there. But if you don't take the action, there's only one person to be blamed at the end. It's you and nobody else. Well, 
innovation is something that doesn't come falling out of the sky. And it's not a team that sits there that does innovation. Uh, if there's something as a team sitting there that's an innovation enablement team that has to work primarily on the culture in an organization to allow others to innovate and to have room for that and to feel uh, protected in terms of, yes, there is room for failure and failure is also a learning experience. There is no fundamental reason or fundamental issue that should allow us to be negative. Uh, and I know that at the, the current situation, if you look at how the world is evolving, it sometimes may, may sound a little bit naive that you say that, but if you look at it from a longer perspective in the, in, in the context of centuries or decades, we have evolved to become a better place and there's nothing blocking us from doing so. In fact, the technology allows us to turn this entire planet into a Garden of Eden. It's in our heads, our mindset, and the way we decide to move forward as a world community that is going to define the outcome.